Oh, hey, welcome to On Hand Art. My name is Brett. It's great to see you. So today we're going to make some explosive, well, dynamic art out of the saucer that my poor mug here used to sit on. So stick around. It's going to be fun. And uh, let's just get started. I started by testing that the gesso held onto the plate and mug, and since it held really well, I put a coat on the top and edges of the plate with enough gesso to give me a thick, even coat. To help that, I'm using this makeup brush that my wife gave me, and for anyone who doesn't wear or is around someone who wears makeup on a regular basis, this is a blending brush. And you can find them, or well, the similar kind, at any art or craft store. It's great for this kind of thing since it gets a large area done fast and it holds a lot of paint. Now my goal is to get an opaque even coat on the top and edges of the plate. And while that dries, I'm moving straight to the mug, making sure to get that same opaque even coat on both the outside and the handle. But for the inside, I actually only need to focus on the upper half because I'm gonna be filling that bottom area with what will be the coffee platform. And then when all of that's dry, I'll go back and do the bottom of the mug and plate. I'm painting the mug a creamy color because both that's what I imagined it to be, but more importantly it's because what I want is a color that will not take up too much attention. The mug is the antagonist of the story, it's doing the smashing of the plate, but the movement and the plate themselves are the stars of the show. I also wanted the whole piece to look and feel like a painting came to life. So I'm starting with a thin coat and then coming back using a lot of that same impasto or texture that I do when I'm painting like a canvas for example. You might have seen that I also mixed way more paint than I think I'll need and that's because I will need it later for touch-ups as I make this piece. And then here's a great example of that. As I'm moving the mug I'll need to touch this up later. For the plate, I'm using a pretty well mixed medium and dark blue with an equal amount of white. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you know I really like using a loosely mixed paint, but that's because I like the action or movement that it imparts. But there's going to be plenty of action in this piece, so it doesn't need any help from the paint. Now, the exact shade also doesn't matter here, but I am using the same heavy impasto to give it the look of a painting. And I'm using these needle nose pliers here to hold the pieces. They love to scoot around while I'm trying to paint them. I'll also be painting the bottom of the plate. It's gonna be a different shade and with less texture, but I'll show you that later. And then I also moved the pieces to this plastic Costco pie lid just to keep them from sticking since I did actually paint the bottoms of these pieces already. And you'll see that using the rest of this paint is going to bite me later. But in the meantime, let's move on to making the coffee. All right, as you can see, I already painted the inside of the mug, giving it a smooth texture. And I'm using this unfolded plastic box lid to make the platform that the coffee will eventually sit on. Now you'll never see this, so I'm just roughing in a circle the size of the inside of the mug, and then I'll add legs to make sure it stands off from the bottom of the mug. I really like these kinds of thin sheets because they're easy to cut with craft scissors, they're easy to fold and even paint, and they're often free with purchase. So I'll get this cut out, fold down the legs, and then cut them all to the same length. After that, it's ready to paint, and I'll paint the inside to make sure it's opaque. I did start with a light brown, switching to a straight burnt umber since I could actually see through that light brown. And then I went back and painted the top to get rid of the shine to match the rest of the piece. As with everything I do, I'm making this all up as I go along, and I found out that I needed to add this cup bottom for more center support for that platform. And it's just glued in place with the paint itself. Now, two things here to keep in mind, I ended up not needing to paint this, we'll talk about that later, but more important, it should have actually been leaning back towards the handle to look like it's spilling forward. Now, I'll fix that later, but either way, onward and upward. To get the plate ready, I'm actually double checking that all the pieces are in the right places. This is also where I find the pieces that I painted upside down. Oh. Now I should mention I painted the bottom a different shade so I could actually more easily figure out where these errors are and I'll repaint this whole thing off camera. In the meantime, while I fiddle with this, if you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing.
While my off-camera painting is drying, I'll move on to the coffee spill. I'm starting by wedging this sheet of plastic in here for some support. Now, this is another example of why I have all that extra paint, because it's going to get scratched up as I do this whole process. Now, originally, I was going to use this plastic sheet for permanent support, but luckily, I was able to use it just while sculpting. And then I'm using these chunks of Sculpey my daughter gave me, and she's not a fan of this stuff, and I totally see why. It's not a bad product, but it can be frustrating, and I'll explain that in a minute. But first, I'll smoosh them all together and get them to an even color, which will also soften it enough to work with. To make the coffee, I'm first roughing it into a long, thin rectangle that's sort of the shape I want. And then I'll rough in the end that will actually sit in the mug and then blend that in as soon as I kind of get it situated. The shape will change a lot as I sculpt, but also later as it's still hot out of the oven. But for now, I'm trying to get it as close to the final shape as I can. So I'll give it some ripples and waves and then just kind of going with whatever looks like splashing coffee. I also needed to get the support plastic out of the way, so I'm using this painter's tape to do that, and then that will allow me to put a curve in there. And then onto this aluminum foil lid, supported by wads of aluminum foil, into the oven to bake. Now, one of the reasons I said this clay was a little frustrating was because after it baked, it kind of spread and relaxed a little bit and no longer fit inside the mug. So I'm using this box cutter to trim away some of it. And I also had to kind of mark off and trim away heavier areas, still using the same box cutter. In a bit of good luck, I actually broke off some of it while I was pressing it in place. So I'll be covering that space with more clay, which allowed me to get more of the correct angle on the coffee spill. So to do that, I'm just smoothing in these pancakes of clay with my fingers, and then I'll also leave a little bit of a ripple and kind of some motion to that surface, so it kind of looks more like coffee kind of moving. And then after the second baking, it was much more flexible, so I was able to finalize that shape while also burning my fingers. So, you know, bonus. And then it was on to painting to match the rest of the piece. With the paint dry, I'll glue it into the mug with contact cement and then gently press it into place so I don't... And of course I broke it. Exactly. I don't have any fill-in media, so I'm going to use a couple of heavy coats of the brown I used for the coffee itself. And it's kind of gotten a gel consistency, so this should actually work out really well. Moving on to the base, I'm making it from this foam I got free with purchase from like a TV box or something. I'm cutting it into a bunch of cubes that I'll glue together with contact cement. Then after I roughly cut it into a circle, I'll use this plastic lid as the final circle template. I'm cutting it out, I'm actually using this really long blade, but I'm cutting it out, cleaning it up, and then I'll wrap it in edge banding. So now it looks like this. And then I'll give it a coat of matte black to get rid of the foam's natural shine. All right, now I can figure out not only how the plate will look as it kind of blows apart, but where the two key pieces will go that will end up dictating where everything else can fit. Once I figure out where those will go, I'm gonna glue them down with contact cement. Now, the funny thing about contact cement is that you're actually supposed to put it on both surfaces first, let it dry for a couple of minutes, and then you can stick it together for a super strong bond. I'll also figure out where this large piece goes in the back. Now, this is the largest piece of the plate, but it's also gonna be along the center line. 
I'll also be supporting it with this wedge of foam, which is completely different than the rest of the other pieces. In the meantime, I'll put some contact cement on that and set it aside to dry. I touched on this a few seconds ago, but not only do I want this to have a balanced look to the piece, but it also needs to be physically balanced on the table. So I also wanna make sure the weight is distributed correctly, which is just something to keep in mind as you're building anything that has any kind of height to it. To hold the other pieces, I'm painting these square basswood sticks matte black, and then I'll give them a pointed end so that they stick in the foam without breaking. I also cut out a thin piece of basswood, kind of in a spoon shape, just to hold the mug at the right angle. And then I'll cut a slot into the foam and then glue that support into place, gently pushing it into the foam. Even though I cut that slot, it will still break in half if I push too hard. I'm also using the same mix of paint that I used for the mug and the same heavy impasto or texture. And that will help it kind of blend into the background. It's not gonna fully disappear, but it will be much less distracting this way. While that paint dries, I can start adding the rest of the plate pieces, starting with this large one in the back. I'm using the same contact cement to attach the supports to the plate pieces and to hold them into the foam. Now off camera, I did a dry fit with each of these pieces before gluing anything. That's how I know where I wanna put these supports. Also off camera, I carved the pointed ends of the supports using a utility knife. Sorry I didn't show you that. I just kind of figured it was pretty boring to see. Anyway, figuring out where these pieces go is kind of part looking through a bunch of examples online, part intuition, and part kind of just knowing what you want it to look like. In my case, I wanted it to feel like the mug was just crashing through that plate, so the pieces would almost be splashing up around the mug. So even though I did a dry fit before, as I'm gluing them in place, I'm still making this up as I go along, kind of just letting the pieces dictate the direction. And then adding the mug is just the same contact cement and gluing it to the support. And then I'll just spend a day away from this whole thing before I take a second look. After that second look, I decided to carefully trim these support ends because you could actually see them from way too many angles and it was taking away from the story and illusion. But after touching up that exposed basswood, I'm actually done and I'll show you the finished piece in a minute. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. I had a ton of fun on this piece and I hope you did too. Now, as far as the idea for it, I didn't actually come up with anything until I got that mug. And I'm not sure who gave me that mug, but whoever you were, thank you so much. I love it. I'm gonna use it every day now. Anyway, if you did like this video, please consider subscribing, maybe tell a friend or two. But without further ado, here's the finished piece.